So welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Vanessa Pigueros, and uh, I have uh, just a brief background. I, I've had about 20 years in cybersecurity. Uh, so when Barrett reached out to me, he said, do you want to facilitate this uh, session? And it's all, you know, all about essentially uh, the, the catch line that everybody pays attention to is, oh, it could break RSA, the crypto, uh, cryptographic algorithm RSA. So that kind of gets everybody's attention. And then I started like looking into uh, the company itself and the technology, and I realized it, it has broader application than that, and we're going to get into that. So uh, I'm happy to have John, uh, John Bean here, who's the CEO, and Fabio, who is the uh, CTO. And we're going to take you through, uh, 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 Fabio will take us through a quick demo and, and so, uh, so everyone can see how the technology works. We're also, uh, I think in the interest of just maybe not everybody understanding how does the technology you use differ from you know, traditional computing uh, models, how, can you, John, kind of briefly explain for the audience how, uh, what MEM computing is using? Yeah, so there's three main differences. Current computers are, follow the von Neumann architecture. So there's memory and, and processing are separate, RAM, CPU. Mem computing is a new computer architecture that was invented at UC San Diego by Fabio Traversa here and also uh, uh, Max Deventra. And it is essentially computational memory. So it's a circuit that has sufficient memory and processing built in. So another difference is that current technology, you solve things with algorithms. So it's stepwise. And uh, you, you talk about CPU cycles, and it could be thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of CPU cycles to do a problem. For mem computing, you feed the entire problem and all the data into the circuit. And we solve the problem in a single mem computing cycle. So you, we never have to go back and forth to memory to get the data. There's no steps. It solves the entire problem. So the other thing to think about is parallelization, where we really greatly differ. Current technology is parallelized at the core, at the core level. So the CPU to the core, you have multiple CPUs with multiple cores, and the parallelization is at the very top. For mem computing, the parallelization is at the logic gate level. So it's down in the transistors, and so it's, it's parallelizing everything. The problem that it solves when it solves it all together in one cycle, one mem computing cycle, it's ultra parallelized. So the major difference is, is our, it's an ultra-parallelized solution that delivers high performance at ultra-low power. Because we solve it so quickly, we use hardly any power. OK, thank you, John. Yeah. Um, so Fabio, you actually want to sure. kind of run us through the demo? And... So uh, just to very briefly introduce, I, I will uh, discuss a couple of slides very, very, very quickly. Then I will enter into a demo. Uh, but just to explain how we approach this problem, the problem of, factor, of factorization. So uh, most of you knows, like the encryption is one of the most used way to encrypt the messages is through asymmetric keys, and that I say is the most used one. And uh, uh, you do this uh, mathematical processing on your message, like uh, uh, you perform an exponentiation, and then a modulus a number. And uh, to reverse this process, so to decrypt uh, your message, you need to uh, um, uh, reverse this process. In order to reverse, you need to know the two factors that form uh, this, this, this large number that here in this slide is number n. So if you, can, uh, if you know the number n, which is the public key, and you can break into the two factors that form this number, then you are able basically to decrypt your message. Uh, there are several uh, uh, attacks to this. So Direct attack is just uh, uh, finding the two pro the, 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 the two factors uh, of, uh, of this number, or uh, you can go uh, with the implicit at attacks, uh, like uh, through the Fermat theorem, which is here in this slide. Uh, I just put the, the, the formula that uh, describes the Fermat theorem, or and uh, and you can actually do better instead of uh, solving directly the Fermat uh, 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 formulation of the factorization. You can just finding congruences that is is slightly easier, and then combining all these congruences that are these uh, formulas that I have written in this, uh, in this slide to then uh, 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 um, solve the Fermat uh, problem that solves the factorization problem 
that decrypts RSA. So you have all this loop here, but the main bottleneck here is actually finding these congruences. If you're able to find those congruences very efficiently, then you can basically attack RSA. And uh, 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 this, this method here, we didn't invent this method, it is actually the most used method. And in fact, the, the, the best way today to make this attack is using uh, uh, the general number field sieve, which is a, um, a method that finds congruences using a smart way, not a brute force way. And uh, we, with this method, they uh, arrived to uh, essentially crack uh, uh, up to 800 bits uh, uh, RSA uh, keys. Uh, uh, of course, this method just scales quite badly, even if better than many others or all the others, but still it scales essentially exponentially. And in fact, here to uh, just crack the 800 bits, it took uh, about 2,000 years, uh, uh, almost 3,000 years uh, 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 equivalent uh, uh, in core uh, um, processing. CPU core processing. So uh, we have done, uh, uh, we have applied our technology to uh, uh, these problems of finding the congruences to then crack RSA. And we did this together uh, in, in a project uh, that was uh, uh, um, supported by the US Air Force. Uh, here is a, a chart that just uh, quickly explain, uh, uh, explains our findings. So we uh, um, uh, created a design uh, to generate those congruences, and uh, we, we created more than one design at uh, different sizes. Uh, creating a design is a process for us, so it takes uh, 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 some computation, auto computation. But once you have that design, you can uh, um, you can uh, easily find those congruences. And uh, we had funding enough to uh, generate all these designs uh, uh, up to 300 bits. Uh, which is basically the crossing point with the best uh, in-class method that I reported here on this slide, which is uh, that the GNFS uh, reported there, which we see that uh, it basically scales exponentially. So uh, to arrive uh, uh, to 2,000 bits, which is uh, the standard encryption today, will take basically billions of years. Uh, in, in our case, instead, the, the, uh, uh, keeping, uh, uh, if we keep scaling like this, uh, uh, decrypting a message uh, with 2048 uh, uh, bit key will take about weeks in an, what we call the emulation mode, so without really actually building our ASIC, or subsequent time if uh, you uh, 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 do not emulate our solution, but you uh, build in hardware. So this is, uh, this is more or less is the summary of uh, uh, our project we did with the US Air Force. I'm gonna now uh, uh, just will do a, a quick demo on this. So it's a little bit clunky, we are a very small startup, so, uh, uh, but uh, it shows more or less the power of what we do. So this is, a, a, I'm not sure if we, are seeing what I'm seeing, but yeah. this is our portal. And uh, uh, on our portal, uh, uh, you can create uh, what we call the jobs. So I'm gonna create a job here, starting from another one, so I do not have to uh, put ma too many settings. Some of them are already pre-done. I just change the name here. I'm gonna call this 100, 200, and I'm gonna load uh, uh, um, uh, uh, prime factorization problems uh, uh, written as, uh, uh, mm, uh, integer linear programming files. I, I'm gonna actually uh, uh, imp, uh, uh, run eight of them uh, for uh, 100 bits, for 200 bits, just to uh, uh, have a statistics. And, uh, uh, okay, and uh, I'm gonna load uh, what I said, uh, which is the uh, design parameters that uh, we found uh, uh, working with the, the US, US Air Force. And I'm gonna submit the job now. This is now will load uh, uh, all uh, um, all files. So no, now this job will run each uh, um, mem computing circuit for just 60 seconds. 60 seconds is 60 seconds of uh, simulated time on a GPU. Those GPUs are uh, uh, running on uh, Google Cloud in this moment, so that's why it's all connected through internet. This. And uh, uh, um, now it's generated the, the problems, now it will return, and we will see the, uh, this uh, uh, in our portal, the job created here, and uh, they should start right away. Uh, in fact, now we see that they are starting running. As I said, this will just take 
uh, uh, one minute each job there will start all in parallel. So the overall time will take one minute, then just the time to bring the files from the VMs to the, the, main, uh, um, to the main storage. And uh, uh, what I will find there will be all uh, uh, congruencies that uh, are needed to uh, basically break these uh, 100, 200 bits. And uh, I choose uh, uh, 100 and 200 type of problems because we can see, uh, uh, and the ga I gave the same exact amount of time, so one minute for each problem. So what we expect if the scaling is, as I, I uh, say, is quadratic, what we would expect is that I will find uh, a quarter of uh, congruences uh, for the 200 bits with respect to uh, the number of congruences I will find for the 100 bits. That's a quadratic scaling. So if you double essentially the size, uh, but you keep the same time, uh, the same running time, uh, you expect to find a quarter of the, these congruences. Now, now the first has, has finished. Now all of them will finish right away, and we will have all of them, and we'll check uh, uh, the actual congruences it found. Just a little bit of patience. Uh, as I said, this is running on uh, this Google Cloud. Uh, each one of them is, is using eight GPUs, uh, V100 uh, NVIDIA GPUs, so uh, uh, they are the largest nodes that they have today. Um, and uh, uh, because, of course, like, um, Simulating, uh, this is still a circuit, so it's, it's simulating a bunch of transistors and uh, uh, other components uh, uh, in a kind of faithful way, and uh, uh, it requires uh, uh, a good uh, amount of computation. And since there was a gentleman from Azure, it'll, it'll run on Azure, too. Oh, of course. <laughs> Now it's just, uh, okay, he has finished all of them. Seems all of them. There's this one. I don't know what's happening with this one. Has finished, but seems, uh, come on. John, um, while well, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so the GNFS algorithm is the one that, the best one known today in terms of this. That's used of conventionally. Conventionally, yeah. 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 So it's a sieve method, and we use a sieve method that's similar. Yeah. yeah. So, but your performance above that algorithm is what, like, what kind of improved performance are uh, are you seeing with? Your well, it's it's orders of magnitude faster. So right now at 300 bits, we're still slower than the best 300 bit decryption that was done before. Um, uh, but uh, as we move up the chain, we'll start at about five or 600 bits will start to be faster. And then, as Fabio said, when we get the 2048 bits, when we build the ASIC, so the, uh, the chip, it'll be sub-second time. We'll break 2048 bit encryption in sub-second time, which is what the internet uses. Yeah, so this is all software right now, and you're going eventually... it's to... It's, it's essentially the computer-aided design of the chip. Before you build a chip, you always build it in, in CAD first. Yeah. But you can emulate the chip, and, and the performance is already it, it just Amazing. Yeah. So I just uh, took the files that I downloaded from the portal that it finished, and uh, I just moved uh, uh, into my, uh, I have a MATLAB routine that uh, uh, um, decodes all the outputs of the, um, of the portal. And uh, uh, now this is just uh, 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 decompressing, and uh, uh, is asking me, uh, they are just seven? Why they are seven? I Lost one. Okay, that should be fine. I probably didn't move one or didn't download one. So I lost one, but that's fine. We're checking seven out of eight. Not sure where it went. And now it's opening each one of them, and uh, it will uh, 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 report all uh, the uh, congruences it found in one minute each, each VM. Uh, um, just uh, uh, to understand that you need about uh, uh, 200, uh, um, about 200 thousands of these congruences. Uh, uh, and just to see how many we found for the 200 bits in one minute, it found 500 congruences and for the uh, about 500, almost 600 on average. And uh, instead for the 100 bits, there are only three of those because for some reason I lost a file, sorry about that. 
but uh, this, this, this is more than enough to understand what, uh, uh, what I want to show. So here what we're looking at are uh, the congru congruences found for each of the problems. So we have these three uh, uh, 200 bits and these four 100 bits. Each 100 bits on average is uh, 200, uh, 2,100 congruences uh, found. Uh, and instead of the 200 bits, about almost 600, which the ratio is about four, which is exactly what we expect. So scaling, doubling the size uh, uh, with the same amount of time, uh, if it scales quadratically, you expect to find a quarter of the, uh, um, of the congruences, which is basically what, uh, what we found here. So this is the demo. It's, it's a little bit clunky, as I said, uh, 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 but uh, uh, for people that are expert, yeah. probably it will, like, it will well, be thank, meaningful. Yeah. Thank you, Fabio. Um, so John, um, can you kind of give like a history of how this all started um, and, I mean, you didn't intend just to say, hey, we're going to go break the RSA algorithm, like, or, you know, or, how, or maybe you did, and then, like, how did that evolve? Well, uh, so when uh, Fabio and Max invented the technology, when they first went to uh, imagined it, what they were trying to accomplish, RSA was one of the hard problems that seemed like something that would be addressed by this. So, so I met them after. Um, so I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've done seven startups, co-founded three. UC San Diego asked me to come on board as an entrepreneur in residence. And I met them. Uh, they showed me their technology. And it was clear to me that this was groundbreaking and it needed to see the light of day and be commercialized. So when we, and I'll tell you when I met them, the, the encryption piece or decryption piece scared the crap out of me. And it was something that we, when we started commercializing it, we purposely avoided. And instead, the low-hanging fruit for us, our first product we released in uh, 2019, we call it our MemCPU platform. It's, it's to address combinatorial optimization problems. So we know them as, uh, some people know them as the traveling salesman problem. It's scheduling, routing, things like that. So if you take, take UPS, FedEx, Amazon, for example, a single truck has, let's say, 110, 120 deliveries getting an optimal route for that truck would actually take thousands of years. They're obviously solving it, but they have an approximation of the best route that they can do. It would take thousands of years with current technology. Our solution, our MemCPU platform, will solve it in minutes, like five minutes. And so that's been, you know, we've done stuff for NASA, Space Force, Air Force, and uh, Lockheed Martin, BP, Chevron, large, large, uh, very large companies. Um, and uh, so that's been our bread and butter, but then, with the Air Force, we met an intelligence group that wanted us, uh, we were talking about the capabilities and they said, aha, that's the one we, we want you to start working on. And, and uh, uh, yeah, and it, we demonstrated that uh, we can ultimately build the chip that will uh, break encryption. So in terms of, uh, you know, uh, business use cases, logistics, what other? Logistics, supply chain, things of that nature. So scheduling, routing, uh, uh, so we've done air, aircraft scheduling, um, cargo scheduling from ships to uh, uh, oil platforms in the Gulf of Mexico, and you know things of that nature. So when you, uh, I just want to roll back on what you said. It scared you the death yeah. at first. Like what kind of? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like what? what well. Well, yeah, I, I, after I met them and realized what it would do, I wanted to go home, take all my money out of the bank, put it in a, <laughs> in the, uh, in a mattress, and go buy a whole bunch of canned goods and put them in my garage. Uh, no, it's, it's, the implications are tremendous. And in fact, I'll tell you, we tried to keep this private. We, working with the government, we said, you know, this really should go top secret and, and uh, we shouldn't talk about it. And, so we didn't, we actually had this capability back in December last year. And then finally, uh, and we've been talking with lots of different groups within the government, and finally on uh, one of the groups, uh, DISA, Defense Information Systems Agency, asked us to present and demonstrate to them. And what we didn't know when we agreed to that was that it was gonna be public. So the fact that it was public kind of forced our hands, but it's actually been good because showing this capability has really reinforced the, um, the fact that we, all the other stuff is real too. Because uh, honestly, when you hear about this technology, it sounds like it's too good to be true. 
So translating this into hardware with ASICs, like what, what is, can you talk a little bit about, um, are there challenges there in terms of doing this? Um, well, the, it, so it, it uses transistors and, and capacitors and resistors, same thing that you use to build circuits today, so to build chips. Our logic gates are specialized, we call them self-organizing gates, and they are, uh, it's a part of the patent for the technology, and it's what really is the magic that makes all this stuff happen so quickly. And um, so uh, we believe that we haven't built a chip yet, but it'll use standard uh, technology to do it. So it's just gonna be putting the circuit, a different style of circuit together, but we think it's completely doable. So Fabio, the, the logic gates, it's a, it seems to be that's the real like, key component of, can you talk about those a little bit more in terms of like what makes them so different? Yeah, so, um... Uh, the name that's, their name is self-organizing because they, uh, uh, they are not really sequential. You know, normal logic gates are a sequential object. You feed the inputs, they return outputs. Our uh, uh, design is, uh, uh, is as these terminals uh, that still encodes uh, um, binary information through threshold like you do with normal uh, digital electronics, uh, but uh, uh, the gate uh, uh, um, creates feedback uh, uh, um, there are voltage feedbacks that are sent to the, these terminals in order to uh, uh, readjust all the voltages and so make them uh, flip uh, up and down. And, but it does in, this, in a way that is not input-output, it's, it's uh, it, it reorganized, so it's, it's uh, uh, um, terminal agnostic, let's say. So you, you can build an end gate and feed uh, the output and request to these gates that return the inputs that uh, satisfy the output. You cannot do that with a normal logic gate. So it works uh, in a completely different way. So it still uh, re solves the logic, but it solves the logic in a completely different way, and therefore uh, it, it allows you to avoid, for example, to calculate all combinations, but find, you know, for example, uh, you want to know with the normal logic gates, think about uh, the end gate, you, 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 you want to know what gives you uh, uh, an output, the, out the output one, an algorithm will try all possible inputs to find the, the output. And uh, so it's checking all the combination. And self-organizing gates, you fix the output. The, the, the logic, the dynamics itself instead goes directly to the solution because the solution is, is, uh, is an equilibrium for that gate. So it goes naturally without checking all the other combinations that are wrong. And you have patents on all of this, I assume? Like yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Have, we, have, uh, we have a few patents, yeah. A yeah. few. Uh, yeah, we, okay. we started with the patent with, uh, with, uh, with UCSD and uh, 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 that uh, we have exclusive license now with the company and then, uh, of course, during the years we have, we have created more, more patents. Yeah. So speaking of an energy consumption, can you just talk about, uh, it, I think you had said something, John, that it was, had significantly reduced power. Like, how does this help us with, you know, the challenge of, yeah, of all course. this AI, all this compute that's actually sucking up energy and kind of, yeah. you know, climate issue, <laughs> worst issue, so like. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, there are, there are two ways in which uh, uh, you use, uh, I mean, our technology could save uh, a lot of energy, like even uh, in some cases order of magnitude of energy. So the first one is what uh, uh, John was saying. So uh, uh, it's a really a computational memory. So avoiding to use, uh, uh, to, to, to move data from CPU to, to RAM uh, back and forth. Uh, that, uh, uh, not, I'm not sure how many people are aware of this, but that uh, is more than 95% of the energy used today in computation. It's not really computation, it's just moving data. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're gonna basically kill already that piece which is humongous. On top of that, uh, the technology itself offers a different way to solve problems which requires less, let's, let's say less flops, so let, less computation itself. So even if you didn't realize in hardware, so you didn't take advantage of taking this movement of data, so you still move the data, but uh, if you use our approach, you will move less data because you need to perform less computation, means move less data. And, we're talking about order of magnitudes less uh, movement because uh, you, especially at scale, you can save uh, 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 so many uh, uh, of these flops that uh, 
I mean, if you compute the energy, it will, it, it will be amazing. And uh, um, John was saying that we have uh, worked on transportation logistics, uh, 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 but we have also other solutions that uh, apply to AI, which is one of the biggest uh, energy uh, uh, sink at the moment for, for computation. So we have, we have some of, uh, we actually just, just submitted the patent to, uh, to Is that related to, to the edge computer? Yeah, to okay. uh, essentially, uh, uh, inference and uh, uh, um, training of neural network that can be sped up with um, with our technology. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about uh, people who say, well, quantum computing? That's right around the corner. It can do a much broader array of stuff. Like, what what are your thoughts on how this fits together? Yeah. Or does it or competes or whatever? Yeah. So I I'm a physicist. So uh, I actually started with quantum computing when uh, there was not even uh, the the. Sun a company that was doing the, that was just academia, pure academia, was, was, was a lot of fun. So it's uh, from, from theory standpoint is, is great. I mean, I love quantum computing. Uh, but uh, then it became something uh, that people tried to, do, tried to do commercial. So they built this hype about quantum computing and so forth. So right now it's a field that uh, is very complicated because uh, uh, there is, again, so much hype, uh, and it's very hard to understand what is real and what is hype at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, my opinion, uh, uh, which is kind of technical, I would say, it's like, it's mostly hype. <laughs> okay, however, the field is amazing, I, I love it. Yeah. So one thing to add to that is the problems that we're solving today, so these, these combinatorial optimization problems, these, these scheduling and routing problems are exactly what uh, and, and prime factorization are the, are the areas that quantum computing is going after. We do it today, and we haven't even built the chip yet. We're doing it with the emulation of our chip. And so it's essentially really, the same basic uh, electronic components. Yeah. You're not, yes, you're exactly. Not the... So th here's a, another big difference. Quantum computer is going to require a room with special and, and a special environment. So, uh, but we're talking about a chip. Our chip will go on devices. It'll go at the edge. It'll go on... Uh, you know, drones and uh, autonomous vehicles and uh, you name it. It'll be, it'll, one day, I think it'll be in your phone. Okay, are there any questions? We have like t three minutes. Are there any questions? Okay. All right. Hey there. Sorry, I'm, I'm not the most technical person in the room, so my question is really, I just want to understand if I'm understanding you rightly because <laughs> it seems like a big deal. You have built, you have, you have, like invented and published a way that when you, when you do it in software, when you emulate it in software, all of the stuff we're using to encrypt our information today is broken once somebody builds it in the real world. Is that correct? Uh, so uh, yes, it's correct, but it's more than that. Like uh, you can do even in software and in hardware. In software, you have, you have a lot of overhead in, uh, in terms of emulation of the circuit itself. So it's going to take probably weeks to break uh, with the software. Uh, the, the hardware, so the ASIC, will do uh, uh, eventually in, uh, in sub-second time. So but, but, but it is just the RSA. That's the RSA. Today, yeah. Today, yeah. And the other thing to mention about that, just so let's say that the emulation would break it in weeks. The, the estimate for current technology to break it is 400 trillion years. This is that groundbreaking. Yeah, so, so what do I not understand about the current state of affairs that the people who do understand security in this room are not running out of the room with their heads on fire? <laughs> well, I think that's why he said he was really scared. I mean, and, and as a security person, this is, this is closing in on us. Um, you know, it's, it's one algorithm, but like you said, there's going to be more to follow. So, yes, it's, it is scary. <laughs> Absolutely is scary. So, Fabio, um, are you using standard design uh, CAD tools, Cadence, Synopsis for this? So, or are you having to Im import your own uh, macros? Yeah, so at the beginning, uh, yes, then uh, we started to develop our own CAD tool for a very simple reason, uh, since we use this as a solver. So it's a CAD tool that makes the design of the circuit. At the same time, we use to solve problems. And so we, uh, we have done uh, our in-house CAD tool, uh, which is very, very optimized for that kind of architecture. So it takes all the general purpose parts of a normal CAD tool, so it speed up. And on top of that, it runs on GPU. Normal CAD tools, they do not run on GPU usually because, uh, because well, the, the usual circuit uh, 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 equations are very hard to 
distribute on GPU. In our case, we can do very efficiently. It took us like, almost two years, actually, to, 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 to make a code very well uh, uh, optimized for GPUs. But, uh, but it can be done because, again, it's very specialized for our type of circuit, yeah, yeah. and likely we can do that. TSMC, oh. Fab? Okay, so we, uh, <laughs> we're out of time here, but like, I, I'm sorry, we're out of time. Um, but like, uh, I, you, you'll be here open yeah. and available for questions. Um, and uh, thank you for this session. Sure. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.